Good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Yashwan. Uh, I'm a consultant gastroenterologist at Bangalore Baptist Hospital. So today I'll try to give you a brief overview of inflammatory bowel disease and what are the possible scope for research. And in this lecture, I'll, uh, I'll try to make it simplified as much as possible uh, to make sure even the non-medicos try to get it. I, at any point you feel that you're not getting it, please stop me and ask. So what is inflammatory bowel disease? It's as the word suggests, it is inflammatory bowel and disease. So for easier approach, we'll take it, it's a disease. So everyone know it is a disease. It is the disease of the bowel. Bowel is intestines, it can be large or small intestine. And it is a inflammatory. So what is inflammatory? See, for simple example, if there is a cut on the skin, so there will be multiple WBCs, white blood cells come across, there are a lot of cytokines and it will help in repair of the tissue. Or it can also occur, say for example, in pneumonia. Are you able to see the things which I'm drawing it? Yeah, absolutely. It's yes, very yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. If there is a pneumonia, yeah. some pathogen coming there, though a lot of WBCs will come and act on the pathogen. Say for example, pathogen means some bacteria or a virus which comes and it will halt the inflammation. And every day we are exposed to thousands of bacteria with uh, in our lungs and in our gut. Gut is the uh, stomach and intestines. So, but we will not have any inflammation like this because there is a barrier or what I'll say put it this this thing as the lumen of the intestine. There are thousands of bacteria here and here is a blood which is completely sterile. There is no bacteria at all. But the bacteria here will not elicit any immune response when it is in the lumen. That is what is the immunotolerance we have made. That is a multiple mechanisms and multiple uh, uh, WBCs are involved in it, and it's a detailed mechanism that's out of scope for this today's talk. Tolerance is maintained, but due to breach of this, there is a inflammation, okay? But not exactly bacteria involved, there is an inflammation which happens in IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, which can have a consequence, sequence of events which happen, and over a years together patient will develop the disease okay this is in brief to tell you about inflammatory bowel disease to introduce you and what causes this we don't know let me be frank with you we don't know we presume it appears to be based on our what do you say epidemiological studies there are And we think it is our diet because in India, we were not seeing this IBD, the Crohn's and ulcerative colitis in the olden days when the people were restricting themselves to traditional diet. Now with the westernization of the diet, we are seeing it often. And also I'll give also a little credit to uh, our group that's a gastroenterologist. We are also detecting more. A lot of time probably it would not have detected. That is one. Then also there are early exposure to antibiotics in the childhood. So this is also happening because of increased uh, good health care and sometimes inappropriate use of antibiotics even for viral fever in the children. So these are the few things which is mainly causing, we presume it causing the IBD. Okay. So there is a still scope. This is one of the point where I feel still there is a scope where we can 
do research and try to find out what is the thing likely causing it. What are the subtypes? There are multiple subtypes, but two most common or in general, if someone has what are the subtype of inflammatory bowel disease, we take these two Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. There are multi microscopic ileitis, non-specific ileitis that will not deal with it. So I to give a brief overview how this affect. So first is simpler one I'll take as ulcerative colitis. It is the colitis. Colitis is colon. Colon, we give it the name for only large intestine. Okay. So itis is inflammation. So it is the inflammation of the large intestine where you see innumerable ulcers. Okay. So usually it is a chronic inflammatory disease. So it is the rectum from here all the way in the large bowel, we can have the inflammation. Okay. So this inflammation leads to multiple things. Patient can have increased frequency of stool with blood. They can have painful defecation, multiple other uh, presentations. I think that has already been dealt the clinical presentation that had made my life easier today. So I'll not go too much into the presentation part. Then the Crohn's disease, Crohn's disease said to affect anywhere from mouth to anal canal. So it is which of one of the deadliest inflammatory bowel disease subtype, which can have significant impact on quality of life. Because most of these diseases have two peaks, two peaks in the onset. More, sorry, this will be the bigger peak. The bigger peak is in the second and third decade of individual. And later peak is in around fifth to sixth decade of the individual. But a lot of patient we are seeing in this second and third decade. So they will have ulcers in the mouth, ulcers in the stomach, ulcers in the intestine and ulcers in the colon. They can have ulcers anywhere. But these ulcers, unlike in the super ulcerative colitis, can traverse and involve the adjacent organ. Say for example, there is an ulcer in this part of small bowel. It can just in, go to the next small bowel loop, cause a fistula or there is a ulcer here, it will just go across the wall and cause a fistula with the colon. Or if it is somewhere near your skin, it can fistulize and form a fistula. Fistula is communication with other lumen. So it can form a communication with the skin and where the stool material or digested food can come out in the outside of the skin. See, it is very simple for me to tell. You imagine an individual Say, for example, a girl in her, I have a patient to, with me who is in her 23 or 24 years. We, who, she is unmarried. She is having a severe Crohn's disease and she has a fistula, which where the stool material is coming out of her skin. Just think of the situation. What is her mental state? It's very difficult to explain her mental state. And if we can bring some change through to their life, it means a lot to us. So clinical feature, I'll not go further in detail because I have told you complications. Sorry, it's not so colorful. I'll try to uh, tell you and draw and tell you what, what I'm trying to say. So the complication can be, see, this is the lumen of the intestine. So when there is a long time inflammation going on, it will cause some changes in the wall and it might cause a narrowing what we call it as strictures okay and sometimes the long time inflammation also cause something called fistula i told there is an adjacent bowel loop it causes a fistula so maybe it is bypassing lot of intestine and causing malabsorption and long time inflammation also leads to the possibility of cancer Okay, so all these are the possible complications. There are multiple and we do also have extra intestinal manifestation. When there is an inflammation going on in this part of intestine, there's similar molecular mimicry, what we call it as means similar tissue elsewhere in the body can also get inflamed. One of that is joints. So arthritis has been dealt in detail by Dr. Jacob. So I'll not go into detail. So joint can be involved. 
uh, what we call it as entropathy associated arthritis there can be liver involvement what we see is primary sclerosing cholangitis and there can be eye involvement where they have multiple uh, depending on the which layer of eye is involved we can call uveitis scleritis and multiple other manifestations so and it's not in one way patient is affected in multiple perspectives if we can bring a change in these patient it means a lot why it is not like a deadly disease like cancer where the survival is too short so even you make an impact it will not last long disease like rheumatoid arthritis or uh, crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis most of these patient we can have a normal life span provided they are diagnosed earlier and treated appropriately but only thing is the quality of life is what is hampered as doctors we should try to give them a good quality of life and prevent these complication from occurring that is with uh, us but there are a lot of limitations to it and those limitations are the point of search or research for us okay i'll put it one by one to us so before that there are multiple investigation we do so uh, in the olden days the investigation was something like this so it was only a rontogen which gave us the x ray and for a long term it was the only modality we used to give barium barium is a radio opaque material patient used to swallow and we used to take x ray based on the pattern we used to say okay this might be the probable disease this might be this disease but we were never sure and often i think these signs were seen in very classical cases 90% of the cases used to be missed so this is one of the string strain where the whole intestine is narrowed if you can see this it's like a string and this is a fissure sign where the, there is a thickening of ileocecal wall ileocecal is this is the large intestine beginning this is the small intestine ending so this is narrow which we see usually in tuberculosis i'll come to the top part so i think i i feel it is wrongly attributed to medicine the advancement is in medicine is in the field of medicine no advancement in the field of medicine is advancement in the field of physics is in the advancement in the field of chemistry so what was there which we could not see was made seen through optics so using optic fiber cable now we have a flexible scope and the materials we cover that is advancement in the physics which is a non irritating covering so now we are skillfully using it but the that advancement goes to the physics so now we are able to see what is the ulcers so patient is having the ulcers so this is a colonoscope colonoscope is a scope with flexible scope with a camera light source and a lot of optic fiber cable and the terminal part where we can rotate and negotiate across the curves of the intestine so here is this is the what you are seeing is the normal or little edematous colonic mucosa this is ulcer what you are seeing white color is ulcers okay so this is a patient who is having a longitudinal ulcers along the course of the large bowel and here there are smaller ulcers this is seen in crohn's disease i mean different presentations so based on this now we are able to uh, think oh yes this appears like a crohn's disease if the ulcer was like this perpendicular to the axis of the intestine then we would think it is probably tuberculosis we presume it then we take a biopsy again that is through optics the microbiologist able to see through uh, in the microscope and they can use chemicals which is again the advancement in the uh, chemistry and uh, other uh, chemicals which they will be able to say probably this is this disease again the treatment treatment again is not particularly in the field of medicine it is the chemistry which is advancing now with the again with the monoclonal antibodies coming in the picture so the colonoscopy which i told you Uh, which gives us a clear view of what is happening inside our body now come from barium enema this colonoscopy advancement has occurred in last 20 to 30 years that's all it's not very old so in 20 to 30 years we have made such a big uh, progress in making diagnosing the disease and treatment now there is a in the colonoscope we have something called endocytoscope which comes even in 
endoscope and colonoscope endocytoscope so what we do is so it is the same colon tip which there is a lens which can be zoomed so we can this is the epithelium means covering of intestine we can just put this colonoscope very close proximity to this and zoom in just like you zoom the binocular and we'll be able to see study the cells there itself we need not take a biopsy and most of the time we are able to diagnose but in india hardly one or two centers have it because of the cost so i i want to give this example for most of you who want to be a future scientist so this is uh, mr gabriel idan so i i, I hope i am right he is, he is a jew guy so he is a israeli who discovered capsule endoscopy capsule endoscopy is it's just like a capsule okay which has a camera light source which keeps flickering which patient has to take just like a, a pill and swallows we keep a one processor outside it will keep sending all the information to the processor and we put it connected to computer it will just read the processor so this capsule we swallow will take the photos predominantly small intestine and it send takes around 50000 photos okay in the matter of around 6 to 8 hours okay and this we study and this has changed the perspective in which a gastroenterologist look into the disease now lot of diseases which were open they were we used to open or the surgeon used to open the abdomen to diagnose or where is it exactly localized with this now we know where is the disease and we can target accordingly either we can do a precise surgery or we can do some advancement in the uh, treatment uh, with oral medications now we have even further so this came is i think around 2001 this came into clinical use and in india a little later now we have a smart capsule smart capsule is even better it's a, it's even senses the ph what is the ph in particular area and where is it correctly now which part of it and how much time it took from stomach to small intestine in small intestine starting to the end and in colon how much it takes so it's along with photos it gives so much idea so it is smart just like smartphones so then we have serology serology is not much used in inflammatory bowel disease it's more so useful in the arthritis uh, associated i think dr jacob has given you fair idea we use anka and aska in uh, inflammatory bowel disease but it is of very limited but if you can find some serology what is serology is uh, i'll just give a brief for those who are not uh, medicos see this say for example this is our wbc or b cell so it releases antibody okay when it is in particular diseases there will be a different set of antibodies which are not usually found will be detected so this if we are identifying this antibody through any of the techniques there are multiple techniques so that is called serology or particular uh, pathogen also if we are finding in diseases we can use it call it as a serology so now i hope am i audible yes doc uh, perfectly fine yeah. yeah yeah so now for me there are lot of lacunes so which i find and i also find it difficult to tell it to the patients so one of that is what is the exact cause so none of us know what is the exact cause let me be frank with you we presume it to be the diet we presume it to be the genes we presume it to be the stress and we presume it to the exposure to the antibiotics in the early childhood and it is also varies with the geographical area it is more so in the northern as you move along uh, away from the equator it's uh, found more commonly than in the equator so these are all the presumptions but we don't know so there is a scope for those especially those medical graduates who want to pursue their uh, thing uh, career in the research this is what we have then role of microbiota see what is microbiota i'll just give you a brief idea so see uh, from oral cavity to 
intestine throughout from oral cavity mouth to anus our body part has lot of bacteria virus fungi okay in fact number of microorganisms is nearly more than 10 times the number of cells in our body then i don't know whether they are ruling us or we are ruling them really it's a still a matter of question and still with that we have a lot of ego in us saying that it is me but it's not me it's a, it's actually hell lot of microorganisms so and the proportion and amount of organisms in each individual is unique okay that study is called microbiota okay it is so unique people say even your dna fingerprint can match with some rare individual but this cannot match so when the baby come out from a, takes birth it is actually in a sterile environment from once it takes birth through the vagina of the mother then from the surrounding area then the food a baby consumes and the stress hormonal level everything so it is said that every event happening since birth would have affected the individual that is the microbiota and now initially we thought this microbiota only affect gi diseases no now there are multiple research which says this microbiota is causes alzheimers this microbiota is also prone make you prone for cardiac diseases there are n number of things if there are only if you ask me where the highest money is goes in research in medical field nowadays it is two one is the microbiota the second one is the immunotherapy so these are the two areas where the lot of funding is happening because these are known to be game changers immunotherapy is i told you there are pathways which is involved in the inflammation those inflammatory pathways are used for cancers so that is being studied in now there are few immunotherapy drugs already available in the market so that's giving fantastic results that is one second is the microbiota so is there any way we can change the microbiota and change the individual pathology or individual uh, what is it the response or the phenotype of the disease so can we change the microbiota and change the diabetes so there is one of the things coming that is incretins anti incretins there are i mean i'll not try to confuse you these are also known to change the pathophysiology of diabetes especially those with diabetes you can almost control or reverse the diabetes or uh, from hbmc what we call it as the one which says how much is the diabetes you can bring down the hbmc by more than 1.5 that's what is being said so in that way uh this is one of the place where you can bank your research if you are really interested in this next lag period from onset to diagnosis see inflammatory disease bowel disease does not happen overnight so it takes long years to progress so there are multiple studies epidemiological studies which are done says that it has taken anywhere between 6 months to 8 year on an average it takes 3 years to diagnose a crohn's disease so most of the time they have come in a slightly advanced stage because before that they will have very non specific complaint pain abdomen bloating they just say it is gas gastritis and often it is missed by uh, a general physician or sometimes even by gastroenterologist because the symptoms are so vague unless you anticipate it and diagnose it early so is there anything which can be done about it because most of the diseases if we diagnose the disease early we can change the target means the say the disease progression is like this if you diagnose it early the prognosis can be way better rather than if you are diagnosing it here okay we can improve the quality of life so anything can be done about it any gene study or genetic study or at least in a patient who has first degree relative with ibd can we do something in that so that is one then this is a million dollar question for all the gastroenterologists that is tb versus crohn's disease what i mean tb is tuberculosis that is intestinal tuberculosis versus crohn's disease we don't know because uh, colonoscopically i told you classically there are multiple ways but then 
it is very difficult to differentiate when they are in early stages for a pathologist in microscope also it is very difficult to differentiate in the early stages often crohn's disease patient end up taking tuberculosis and a tb patient end up taking crohn's disease treatment so either way it affects patient's quality we don't have an answer in a very close cases even today can we provide effective prevention in those who are likely to get like i said in mother and father who has having inflammatory bowel disease we don't have an answer for it do i have do we have ai artificial intelligence come in to help i told you the colon in ulcerative colitis after 8 years the individual will have very high risk for developing cancers so we have to take multiple biopsies through colon so we have to take a minimum 33 biopsies it is very tedious and it is very random i accept the fact so is the artificial intelligence that is the scope of, uh, now it is there coming in the market but none is validated so where if we keep a scope there it will assess the epithelium and say probably this is the abnormal mucosa you can target that it can color code it will usually color code with green so you can take that particular biopsy few biopsies even with 5 6 biopsy you will be able to give do the surveillance does that help and make our life easier and make our work more efficient so that is one and do we have a cancer prevention in these patient with ibd means these patient are prone for cancer but we don't know who which subset so those who have longer disease definitely are prone but we don't know any particular other factor genes or the diet or the geography will have a effect on it because a lot of time we end up doing the surveillance and most of the patient will not develop there are very selected patient who doesn't come for surveillance end up having colonic cancer so can we bring any uh, uh answer to these question is the one this is i told you the million dollar question it's the problem in us it's the problem in india but only thing in us the tb chances are less so they treat all the diseases as crohn's so there are multiple factors which start probably give us a answer like i told you if it's a so there is based on the study uh, lee et al try to give a answer saying so probably you can attribute if these four are there you can think it's a crohn's if these four are there it's a tb but in practical clinical practice we, this is not much of help let me be frank even though the statistics the number looks great i'll come to it what is number and medicine so and treatment treatment we have n number of drugs okay and uh, now with the biologics which have a very good effect efficacy so what we are trying to do in inflammatory bowel disease rheumatoid arthritis or any autoimmune disease see this is a this is a normal c anything below this is normal c where there can be minimal inflammation which is not detected or doesn't cause any harm to the body okay beyond this is something abnormal so over a period of time so say for example we detect a patient with a crohn's disease we, who has a very high inflammation so inflammation i told you what is inflammation this inflammation is the root cause for all the problems which is happening so what do we try to do we dampen the inflammation so what the drugs we give we call it as immunomodulators because we are modulating the immunity so one of few of our steroids okay so biologics biologics i told you there is there are some antibody which causes the pathology we put a one more antibody to it and neutralize it that is the biologics okay we use recombinant dna technology for that so th those are the biologics we use this to dampen our immunity but there is a risk of opportunistic infection to us so and we'll try to maintain this dampened immunity with other immunomodulators like azathioprine and methotrexate they are the drugs immunomodulatory drugs and we maintain this so it is again it is not normal and you are not cured of a disease any time the disease flares up or any time the patient discontinues patient will have again the surge of the disease activity 
so this is just like diabetes we are controlling it we are not curing it so if we can come up with uh, any cure i think they will deserve a, a nobel prize and but how we know more we know the pathology why is it caused the more likely we find a answer how it can be cured okay that is again a possibility for research and these are the drugs uh, azathe uh, sorry a amino salicylic acids steroids azathioprine methotrexate and calcineurin inhibitors i'll not go in detail which can be used in ulcerative colitis and which can be used in crohn's disease induction is we dampen or reduce the immunity and maintenance is once we reduce we maintain the same immunity is called maintenance so there is lot to do which i mentioned but can medicines be more effective and affordable because see the biologics are pretty costlier now it has come down but still it is beyond the reach for many uh, individuals in india those especially those who do not have insurance and it is not affordable to move. which are more affordable again then again there is something called personalized medicine okay so personal personalized medicine is see one shoe doesn't fit all okay so medicine is such a branch that you give one paracetamol to a patient with fever he might respond patient one might respond patient two might not respond to the same paracetamol or patient one in a different time might not respond because or you give an antibiotic they might respond at one point of time they might not respond to in other point of time because it has to be individualized it comes from genes patient uh, hormone or enzyme status patient liver status kidney status and multiple things so it can it be more personalized so there is this is one of the branch of medicine sub branch which is coming up so it is uh, not exactly as target therapy which this is more personalized like you have you can make a custom made shoe for an individual you can custom made uh, treatment even though patient, there are two patient with crohn's disease they receive different treatment because say for example one has a mutation which has very high risk to go for cancer or fistula so we start that patient directly with the biologics whereas there is one more patient both are 23 year old but the one more patient who does not have the mutation and unlikely will have a florid disease so we can start with just oral therapies immunomodulators and steroids to start with and he will have a pretty good course so can we personalize that that's still lot scope to look into it and uh, i just want to give uh, this idea uh, why doesn't calculator work in medicine because we say in medicine 2 plus 2 unlikely to be 4 and some even say it is never 4 it is either 3.6 or it is 4.2 because of the same reason i told and that is the why we cannot make a robot or a uh, there are lot of concepts of like a uh, what do you say the telephone clinic so where you keep uh, places where a doctor cannot reach we keep a uh, um, uh, instrument where it check everything vitals of every every vitals of the patient and give a diagnosis and treatment but that's not possible because same set of symptoms they cannot they can be multiple things patient with cough and cold can have viral pneumonia patient with cough and cold can have cancer patient with cough and cold can have other abdominal problems also so it, it is an entirely different thing so now people are coming with the these sort of mobile clinic but there the call is not taken by the robot it is the doctor sitting somewhere else so that is again the telemedicine is one thing again which we can work and it worked a lot during the covid but again it is going back so, uh, whether it works out because there a lot of doctors are not comfortable with the telemedicine so uh, whether can it be more comprehensive so that the doctor also feels more virtual with uh, there is something metaverse whatever uh, meta is coming i don't know whether it's just for gaming can that also come into the field of medicine in the future that uh, you should look into so i just 
uh, as a researcher i if someone had asked me what i wanted to be in my childhood i said only one sentence scientist i always wanted to be a scientist i never wanted to be a doctor there are multiple things happened in my life i went only once to hospital before taking up my mbbs when my dad got surgery done so second time i went is when my got my mbbs i never wanted to be a doctor let me be frank with you but once i took the profession i really thoroughly enjoy it and i feel the gratitude a patient getting cured of the disease gives is the most pleasant uh, feeling you will have and i think that's more than anything else in the world for me so there are a lot of uh, lacunae i found for the research so i thought for these youngsters this might motivate so one is the passion so for anything you do for research or other things see the money will come the fame might will come but you should have the passion at the end of the day you should enjoy your work so a lot of times you might just like me who i was very good in physics and maths we might end up in other branches but then whether will you like the other branch what you have got if you don't like it then there is no point in continuing so you are entering a research field if you like it then it is worth to enter in the field in, in the field or else you might have to think of changing so first to become a good scientist or to do research you should have the passion in the subject second is the intent so you should have the intent what change you want to bring in so or you should have a vision to look into what can possibly change you can bring it then the economy see uh, economy m- matters a lot in india that is one of the thing so as a gastroenterologist i ha- actually have lot of idea to i mean if someone of you interested you can please contact me there are lot of equipments instruments i need so i feel that those will makes my job easier so and i have i already contacted uh, see i am not too uh, old i just 3 uh, to 4 years into my uh, practice as a gastroenterologist so i try to contact these companies there are big companies olympus there is meditronics all those i have mailed a uh, couple of times to them saying i have few ideas if you are interested i am ready to share so that we can develop few instruments which will make a life of a gastroenterologist very easier and we can go ahead with the uh, techniques but they they never respond to me i thought it's only to me but then i went and inquired i don't think they respond to any of these third world countries as per them india is also third world country or a developing country to them because one is one is we are not whites that uh, is open truth they don't take it and second the economy economy see uh, i just give you an example the endoscope colonoscope so there are uh, n number of gastroenterologists in india we take and through the uh, uh, hospitals we acquire the instrument but even then india doesn't even account for 1% of their economy i mean their sales so there are nearly 90 to 95% of their finances or money comes from us or north american market europe and australia so anything done there matters a lot anything done here doesn't matter a lot we can bring the change if we try to develop in our own country something and we should be able to accept it and with the proud because lot of indians we including doctors i i, I doesn't restrict itself to instruments even rest uh, uh, it can be in clothes shoes or any other thing for mobile phones for that matter anything made in india we are not proud of it so there that proudness should come and also i want this p also professionalism in india the tea maker make a comment on how sachin should hit a six and a dobi says how a doctor should treat but no that's not the thing so if you are a doctor you should be more professionalistic do what is your work in your stipulated time and if you are an engineer you should be do your work more professionally in your stipulated time and go back enjoy your work with the family this professionalism does not come especially more so in our bureaucracy if they had a good principles or good rules probably we would have a better country today so there is no professionalism in most of the branches i uh, sorry i don't know if i am wrong i might be young please excuse me if i am wrong but 
I say if this is one of the things which can bring our country up is the professionalism. Next is the integration, which is this organization is doing uh, now is the integration of the different subject. I told you the advancement in medicine is not the advancement in medicine. It is the advancement is in physics it advancement in chemistry. It is the advancement in optics. It is all in the advancement in other field bringing a change. So it has to be integrated. But nowhere in India, it is made like integration, especially I told you MMST, which I'm aware of that. Other than that, not much of integration. We see, for example, I nearly 14, 15 years, I've studied after my MBBS. I'm not seeing an engineering student coming and interact. I have tried, uh, I have approached a lot of engineering through startups. I want this, but they are unable to make the instrument I need. But uh, there is no interaction. Uh, but those who are away from it, who are into clinical practice, people are into clinical practice, doctors. There is no interaction. If we club come together, a one is the one with, I mean, it's not just engineer, it's not just doctor, it's not just chemist. It's also people with marketing technology, because if, if you discover something or you come up with something, there needs to be marketing. So there is a finance guy also required. And there is a, uh, uh, and this path has to be smoothened with easy patenting and all those. So there is a bureaucracy also. So there is a, there should be an integration. I think this organization is trying to integrate at least the engineering course and the medical course and if possible other branches. And this is one thing which helps and what drives the nation. So see it's uh, at the end, it's the humanity, but what drives the nation? So you want to be the best in power. So what you want, you want to be the manufacturer of how long until some other country, which does labor in so cheaper price, like Bangladesh now taking most of the manufacturing. So what drives the nation? So on a long term, or if you want to be in the driving seat, it's the research, just like Israel, which is doing it. that is one of the things which I think as a uh, young, younger generation, we should invest a lot. I think in the previous generation, a teacher, a scientist, and a uh, one who works in the basic science, that is BSc, MSc, PhD, were given a lot of respect. I don't know what changed that, probably the money, I think. The people who are working in applied science, that is the engineering and doctors, are given more respect than those who are works in these that's where i think the cha change of shift has happened now everyone wants to be an engineering and doctors no one wants to be a scientist or a teacher so you want a better india 30 years ahead we want a better teachers today so then we can build a better nation so with that i'll end my talk i think it's a bit helpful uh, at least uh, if not at least it inspired few uh, and I have done few research work and this is one of my best paper. It's world's largest quart on hemosuccus pancreaticus, where there's a bleeding from the pancreas into the intestine. So it's this, we search and learn. After that, we find questions and then we do research. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunities. I think over a, a week time, a lot of speakers have given you enough ideas. And I also think I have contributed a little. I'm happy to take any questions. Dr. Dheeraj, uh, uh, so Dr. Yashwant, I think nothing could be better than your sketching on the blackboard. I think, I think I, for a moment, I thought you were a teacher first rather than a doctor. So I guess I guess that's how uh, things can change, and I think your pipe in formula at the end was absolutely hitting the nail on the head. And I think when we got together with IIT Roper and um, Dheeraj, Sujitesh, and myself along with Director IIT, I, actually this uh, the six elements that you mentioned there were exactly the six elements that we started off with. And I think the people who joined this journey. Uh, I think each one of them have these six elements built into them. Otherwise, I don't think they would have been on this journey thinking, you know, what are these chaps up to? 
so I, I guess with that, uh, Dheeraj, hand it over to you to open the session for questions. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Yeshwan, for for a fantastic talk. So I, I think we are just opening up for the questions, and everyone who is uh, ready with the question can raise their hands, and we can call one by one. So first, uh, Dave, you can start with, please. Yeah, good evening, all. My name is Dev Baglani. I am from BTEC Third Year Mechanical. From I am from Ahmedabad. Sir, my question is: Can a person get infected with the other medications for another disease? Like, a person can person get infected of IBD due to another disease's medications? Uh, sorry, Diraj, uh, I I can't hear that uh, question. Can Can you repeat it? Yes, sir. So. Can a person be diagnosed by IBD if they are getting they are taking higher medicines for some other diseases? So I guess I guess let me try to repeat it for uh, Doc. Uh, so what I think Dave is mentioning is suppose you are taking a medication for a particular disease, can IBD develop because of that medication? So no, uh, see. Uh, Usually, drug-induced IBD is not so common. We we usually say it is the drug would have precipitated, but we never attribute it to the drug. Say, for example, patient was uh, uh, spondyloarthritis. Patient was on steroid for a long time, but patient would have odd, also had bowel disease, but it was never came into picture because patient was taking steroid, which treat both. Once the patient stopped the steroid, then the patient will have disease. That is one. And second, there is a uh, organisms like uh, Mycobacterium paratuberculosis, which is also attributed that it might cause the IBD. So something which reduces the immunity can precipitate, but they themselves does not cause disease. I hope that answers. Yes, sir. thank you. I think next is Dhanish. Uh, Dhanish. Good evening, sir. Sir, uh, I wanted to ask. You talked about cancer, cancer being a very big problem for patients of IBD. What would be, what should be our approach to cancer screening as a novel idea in IBD, sir? So uh, you meant uh, the for cancer screening, you meant right? That's right. Sir. Yeah. See, uh, I I gave you the uh, my idea. I gave you. See, uh, normally. Okay. See, normally Crohn's disease does not have a cancer risk. Ulcerative colitis is the where there is a high risk for cancers. So, as a protocol, is the patient with ulcerative colitis after eight years of the diagnosis, we should do colonoscopy every yearly, and. We should take 33 biopsies every four centimeter. We have to take four biopsies, minimum of 33. It can go up to 40. It can be 50. It is a very tedious process. Process, and we don't know which is the foci which is harboring the cancer. If it's a very large cancer, we can pick it up. But we have to detect the cancer early. That's why the screening program is. But most of the time, we might miss the foci or the place where the cancer is originating. So. For that, what I said is the artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence doing a tremendous job in detecting polyp and other things. So it is coming up uh, in India also. So if we use this artificial intelligence to detect these possible foci of cancer, which is abnormal, then we can take a targeted biopsy. Even with five, six biopsies, we would be able to complete the surveillance. And the results are so fantastic that you can treat the patient based on that. And if we detect early, we can uh, do a colectomy and patient will be cured of cancer even in the earlier stages. Right. So, sir, is this artificial intelligence, is there any way that we can make this uh, shift from an invasive approach to a non-invasive approach? Maybe we can use the cells that are shared from the people matter. Is that, is that possible? Uh, um, like uh, cells? Last part I didn't get. Sir, I wanted to ask, like, is there any way to change the screening process from an invasive approach to a non-invasive approach? Maybe the cells that are shed in the fecal yeah. matter, is there any way that we can use them for screening? 
yes that is being studied but the problem or uh, limitation here is the shedding occurs along with the stool so how how are you going to uh, separate the cells from the stool that is one if you are able to have a methodology to separate the cells definitely normal cells will not be shed so easily to the stool when there is a malignancy definitely as we mentioned it will be shed easily to the stool but is there a way can we segregate those cells then it would be i mean let's say a question for uh, yourself and the others who wants to do research if you can segregate then yes definitely it's not just in ibd then it will come into the normal after 50 years everyone is expected to go colonoscopy for colon screening then we can even include in in the whole general population so if you can come up with something like that it is of so much use right i'm um, so just one final question you also mentioned the capsule endoscopy right um is there any way that you are aware of that uh, the tubercular lesions as we know are kg kg eating granulomas while the ibd lesions will be non kg eating or even absent sometimes is there any possibility of differentiating between them on the basis of maybe the light that the capsule endoscopy uses uh see uh, see i told uh, one point see all case eating granuloma we see in tb okay but that doesn't mean all non case eating granuloma are not tb so we see in hardly 20 to 30% of tb case eating granuloma will not see in all the cases so majority of the cases will not be diagnosing on the caseation so that's why okay. that so might not be a point or a target uh, through which we can diagnose the tb versus crohn right right thank you sir thank you so much oh thanks think aditi uh, aditi your your hand is up yeah yeah um uh, um good evening everyone my name is aditi i'm from i'm a third year mechanical student from iit indore so my question to you firstly uh, is that uh, the ibd like when it occurs and when you have this there's there are a lot of things going on in your body so like diabetes uh, like when we have diabetes we uh, they fall susceptible to many other things like uh many other things like the diabetic foot or the other things so is there something like that associated with ibd too like maybe when it's progressing are there any other things apart from the obvious uh issue with the intestine and all the things which happen there the uh, are there any other things that was the one question and next thing is, uh if someone has maybe like has a predisposition of ibd through genetics or whatever can things uh, uh like an a not so good lifestyle like maybe uh, skipping meals and uh, other things which improve increase inflammation in general can those things actually make a person get ibd like much ahead of, much ahead of time like maybe like 10 years in advance or something if they are on a really bad lifestyle okay so uh, let me uh, answer the uh, uh, question first question so it's a uh, good question saditi the first one you told like diabetic food but then the diabetic food is a complication it doesn't predispose the disease of diabetes so we have a complication fistulas uh, cancers or all those are complications so it will not help us to diagnose so as you asked is there anything happening before we patient present to us yes definitely yes so what are those happening is the inflammatory markers like crp c reactive protein there is a something called stool marker fecal calprotectin there is uh, interleukin 6 all these inflammatory markers are elevated but these are very non specific markers ex uh, except the fecal calprotectin which says there is a gut inflammation
So I guess. Uh, Hello? Hello. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you, Doc. Yeah. Satya. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Um, sir, my question is that in India, many people, uh, first of all, I am I'm, I'm Satya Bharti, third year medical student from Surat. Sir, I just wanted to ask that in India, many people use traditional medicines for diseases. Is there any cure available for these diseases in traditional medicine? If... Uh, uh, see, uh, I mean, I my apologies, I doesn't know much about it. Okay, about homeopathy or Ayurveda. But it is also not right to take them out that they don't have any values. There are values, but most of the thing is it is not integrated with the modern medicine. That's what I'm trying to say. I have done little research when I during my MBBS days, even with little turmeric and review articles I have done. But then those things has not brought into the mainstream medicine so that we can have evidence. We can put it on the face and say the Western population, see our traditional medicine has a value. So they accept it. But the problem is we are not proud of our medicine. And say, for example, now in Ayurvedic doctor dispatches an allopathy medicine. So it doesn't make sense. If he has a proof, he can always come up and we can uh, patient. See, at the end of the day, it should not be like uh, homeopathy separate, allopathy separate and Ayurvedic separate. If we can give a comprehensive approach to the patient with the IBD, if their quality of life improves, why not? Why not? We should integrate the medicine now recently they have found in one of the thing sambar the turmeric what they use it has an anti-cancer property that is accepted that is accepted in most of it has come in our textbook and our journals so why not if we have something in our tradition which uh, pro probably we cannot explain with the whatever the methodology we have why not come up with the proof and show to the world thank you sir uh, Angad, Angad Tiwari, your hand is up. Angad. Angad, if you are speaking, we are not able to hear you. So. Okay. So, uh, while I think Angad is... Uh, okay, Jay has got his question. Jay, over to you. Yes, sir. Uh, so good evening, sir. So my question is regarding colonoscopy. Like people do, uh, people g uh, get their colons removed after like uh, when they when they have severe IBDs. But sir, for that they have this uh, pouch uh, like um, stoma attached to their uh, this thing. So how efficient is that? And can we have something which is like which is replacing colon directly inside the body? Is it possible? Uh, see, uh, your question is a very good question, Jay. But I'll put in a different perspective. See, what is the function of the colon? Colon, most of the time, colon function is to reabsorb water content. So almost 90% uh, of the water content is absorbed. Very few vitamins like B12 is by the saprophytic bacteria, it will be synthesized. Or else the role of colon in digestion is very limited. It is for defecation. Okay. And our ileum is such a good organ that it is it can capable of accommodating it can do jejunum function it can do colon function it accommodates and, and it will try to absorb more water but it cannot do that saprophytic function yes but they will have relatively increased tool frequency initial one to two years they will have six to seven but over a period of time it comes down to two three that's all per day that's as good as a colonic function okay but only cosmetic is the one issues but if the patient has intact anal canal we can uh, anastomose that to the colon. Probably, if we have something to replace ileum, we don't have something to replace ileum. Okay, ileum is the best gut or best part of the gut which can stimulate or it can replace the one above or one below. Even jejunum cannot replace ileum, but I ileum can replace jejunum, ileum can replace colon. So, if you can come up with something like ileum or the distal part of small intestine uh, which can replace, it's a fantastic idea but not the colon might not be the so good
Okay, so I think uh, I don't see yes, any sorry, hands sir. up. Yeah, yeah, sorry, so Jay, like, you had the question? Yes, sir. Like uh, coming to the aesthetics of this trauma, like people say that it's a pouch which uh, like sometimes uh, doesn't look good. Like if we somehow improve the aesthetics, would would that increase the acceptability of the uh, colonostomy? Like uh, people do not uh, usually go for colonostomy saying that who will carry the pouch the whole day. Yeah. See, aesthetics, uh, there are multiple ways people have tried to improve. They uh, you try to use the tattoos. They have tried to conceal it behind the clothes. And they have come with a different varieties of pouch so that it will not be obvious. But uh, we have to accept the fact that when things come out, it smells like stool. Stool is stool, whether it is uh, you improve the aesthetics. That's the smell and the irritation of the surrounding skin, which matters a lot to that particular patient. So it's often, uh, I mean, if you, we are targeting the end point, that is the stoma which has happened, maybe it is good why the patient had to develop a stoma, what has caused, whether it is IBD or cancer. If you can try to prevent that, that matters a lot than a, uh, giving a solution for a stoma. Because most of these stoma patient ones, they... So for them, that cosmetics doesn't matter so much, except those with IBD who undergo stoma. Yes, for them matter, but it is temporary for them. So it's a matter of around three months for them. So maybe we should go higher up in the ladder before they develop this uh, condition, which causes the stoma. We should try to act. Thank you, sir. Asta, Asta, you have raised your hand. Good evening, sir. This is Astha Kalita, third year chemical engineering student. So my question is that if a person is uh, diagnosed with ulceritis uh, in colonoscopy, as you mentioned, it must be done uh, yearly or uh, so. So is it possible that after a year or so, if again it is diagnosed, can the ulcers be uh, cured or so it will remain as it is? So means uh, you are asking the question like, is it diagnosed early in the course? Will it make an impact rather than one year later? Correct, Asta? Uh, sir, like uh, if uh, an ulcer is detected, so if it is again being uh, diagnosed a year later or so, can it be uh, like cured or is the ulcer will remain like that? See, uh, ulcer will remain. See, ulcer will progress. So to start with, it's just a redness to start with. Uh, if I show you a colonoscopic view, I don't have the images, I'll just give you. So to start with, it might be redness when you are seeing on colonoscopy. Over a period of time, it will become small, small ulcers. Then there will be intervening area which becomes edematous. Then it becomes ulcers. Those ulcers will never heal unless you treat. They keep growing bigger and they coalesce and make a geographical ulcer, whether it is horizontal or vertical. So later when you treat whether how big is the ulcer, it will heal. Ulcer will heal, but not the disease. Okay, sir. So there, uh, I don't think any more hands are up. So one last question, which I had Yash from our, um, when, when mother was having the IBD was that, uh, you know, um, what we heard is that the stress is uh, one of the factors which the doctor at that point in time mentioned um that because all of a sudden she she developed but i guess the pointers that you were mentioning that maybe it was there but then it was being overlooked either as a gas or a heartburn or um you know like the patterns of uh, uh, the the uh, stools becoming loose and then constipated i think as as indians we take this as like granted kuch khaya hoga kuch kiya hoga and all that uh, but when i think um, when when we the diagnosis came first as ibs and then you know like ibd you know there is always this gray area but how how big is this stress factor do you see the stress as a one of the trigger points i don't know how much of work is done in that area uh, yeah, yeah there is a lot of work but it is not for ibd it is for ibs so ibs is irritable bubble syndrome so to give a small briefing we have highest number of neurons after brain is in our intestine. 
so it is also called second brain so i'll give you all of you one example most of us during the day of exam would have gone to washroom twice we would have urinated three four times before going to exam this is just an example of stress so even a stress can induce changes in your bowel and it is also said it is induced the changes because of the neurotransmitter induces the changes in your gut microbiota so but it is not being studied where that will cause ibd that time there is no studies but ibs yes so there is again one subgroup in the gastroenterology which is doing a good in research is uh, neuro gut axis or neuro liver axis neuro pancreas axis so so much of the brain what is happening in the brain affect us so as a gastroenterologist i want to give you two perspective to you i mean it is for a general population there are only two things happening to us which makes us a small baby to so big so one is the air what we take which is involuntary which we are not aware of and uh, now we are aware only because of the covid we were conscious about it wear mask the second is the food we eat food we eat is generally in our hands so and most of the times we attribute everything to the food yes often it is right but lot of times we are wrong it is we at fault but we are not ready to accept that we are at fault so we just say i had ice cream so i developed cold i had uh, something jangir i developed fever so it's not so right but we don't want to take the blame on ourselves that is one second second is the food we eat especially the quantity lot of us eat more nearly more than two times three times of what is required okay see uh, if you take just a generation or two generation before my grandfather's generation probably they used to eat two meals a day we don't have a word uh, indian word for snacks they never had a concept of snacks they used to eat 10 o'clock in the morning then they used to go to farm from farm they come back and they used to have a dinner at 6 o'clock 7 o'clock and sleep there are multiple good things in their diet they used to eat two so the less number of time you eat less like you are stimulating your hormones in the body and you are giving more rest to your gut that is one important point second point they see britishers came and took lot of science of ours maybe ayurvedic and education system everything but there is one part which they didn't kill which we are killing that is our kitchen okay so traditional food was never touched we still it is there in our villages the traditional food it is so rich and for our genes and our uh, climate this is the mate so so see for example for me south indian a south indian food which is quite good for here so uh, someone come from punjab taking their own traditional food is good for that particular climate and why you want to change drastically to pizza burger everywhere pizza burger is for those who live in particular attitude altitude and particular latitude longitude and latitude for them yes it is good but why you want to change to suddenly our habit or our body does not take that in one generation see even some i go to uh, us my thinking cannot be like a us citizen for three generation only after three generation i can think like a us citizen or my my grandchildren can think like us but how you can expect our whole body to accept some diet which is not our own traditional so i i think that we should stick on to our traditional food maybe sometime very rarely you can't avoid yes but then these are the two things which i feel that we which we are neglecting along with the westernization not just the clothes i think the diet which is making so much impact i think that we need to look into especially the youngsters if you can come up with see not just you can come up with promoting our indian diet just like they have promoted the burger why don't you promote our indian diet in a better way and put it across and even you can go outside india and sell it thank you doc uh, dheeraj over to you i think or are there any questions i can see dhanish uh, you have got a question if yes sir uh, just one last question sir um so dr dr yashan um, uh, since the topic of traditional medicine role in ibd came up i wanted to ask you most allopathic doctors are clueless when patients come with uh, traditional medicines working for them and then not working for some other patients 
um how do you go about convincing them that the medicine that has worked for them may not work for others or that it may not work for the same patient in the future and as a specialist in allopathy in what manner would you like this traditional medicine to be integrated in the current scenario as soon as possible or in the most um regulated way possible if i may say so you see when so patient i think I think, Doc, just before you answer, I wanted to just mention Dhanesh is a medical intern at AFMC, right, Dhanesh? I'm so sorry, sir. I, um, yes, sir. I'm a final year medical student at Armed Forces Medical College. Yeah, Dhanesh, that's a nice question. But still, again, I'm clueless. Because, see, why I'll happen? It's practicality. Patient come with, Mujhe ye khane ke liye diya gaya hai. But I don't know what is the chemical. I don't know how does it act. I don't know whether it is an appropriate dosage. then how can i comment on that that what they are taking is appropriate or not i i never blame the traditional medicine i'll say the patient that my knowledge of traditional medicine is even lesser than yours okay but what i say them is if you are happy with it if you are convinced that and if it's working for you you can continue it but what i don't know is what they take and we give something else it might interact i don't want them to do a mixopathy either they there are a lot of cases with one dose there is something called in the west bengal i have seen n number of patient they do some haripatti sort of thing some medicine they give for acute hepatitis see this acute hepatitis most of this is hepatitis a or e neither ayurvedic nor homeopathy nor allopathy required with the body has its own mechanism it will solve for that jaundice will be there whether you don't give anything also it will resolve but what uh, medicines we require for other things that is for hepatitis b cirrhosis obstructive mm-hmm. jaundice we need medicine there is i accept the fact that most of these other because for it surgery or endoscopic therapy is required and most of the other medicines will not have these patient with obstructive jaundice or either other hepatitis a or e are given i think we have lost uh, yeah yeah uh yeah we lost you dr jashwan but i i think it was almost there at the end okay so i i have one question that means i i personally feel that there is so much of mysterious things going on but one one binding thing where probably we, where we can decode things in very detail which is body specific is through some genetic signatures of each body uh, so is there a correlation somebody has tried that how how the genetics will will lead to a certain disease um, because i remember one of my uh, friend uh, in in us he made a startup where uh, through genetic profiling he is now predicting that w- what you are more prone to in future like based on based on the uh, gene uh, genetic study and is Uh, like for example somebody uh, genetically is more aligned towards having diabetes so then uh, his company is suggesting the the diet plans for them to prevent something happening in in long run so is there some mechanism some way we can also think about ibd some signatures from the gene uh, gene profile coming up that somebody is more prone somebody is less prone is is there yes yes like definitely sir in that way well, there is one gene which has been extensively studied in ibd is the card gene so what does that suggest is especially those with crohn's disease so in the ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease the genes genetics all matters in crohn's in ulcerative colitis it's not much valued or it does not have much correlation in crohn's disease those who have card mutation it is card card mutation so those who have that they will have more severe disease more fistulizing disease and more aggressive disease so oh, those patient we can try early biologics that is one and their first degree relatives more likely to have developed the disease this is one of the extensively studied if we have multiple genes as you said rightly mentioned if we have multiple genes and we studied it well 
maybe the permutation and combination we can, we'll be able to profile the patient but as i said these uh, this is the one thing which is static but the other things the diet patient eats the stress the patient undergoes the hormonal changes which are occurring that's not in our control again so you you are targeting one of the factor yes it is a very important factor i agree but how much it will make an impact only through studies and research we'll able to know in the future okay one last question uh, see somebody who want to uh, uh, try this genetic way of doing things how, how to get this databases like because we have good uh, computer science engineers in the teams and and if we want to do some data analytics based uh, uh, predictions uh, for who is more uh, what are the sources of open uh, like uh, uh, genetic data and and the diseases somebody had so is there a way that student can get access to data and then do some so data analysis i give a brief outline see uh, see i am in bangalore so i see more ibd there is one gastroenterologist in third tier cities or in a rural karnataka he will not see these many ibds as i see so ibd is more so restricted in urban population so now we can do profiling in three set of people so the one is ibd patients per se those who have already ibd then there is a urban patient who are act as a control we can take a number and the rural population whose genetics supposedly very good and the microbiota especially supposedly very good we can take these three subset and we can compare these three subset which is the one which is differing in these population that we can try to highlight then we have to prospectively study these and to see how the patient develops the disease over a period of time okay okay fine thank you thank you so uh, i i think it's a wonderful session uh, so uh, we we have no more questions uh, to be asked so with this i i really thank dr yashwan for sparing time out of his schedule and uh, enlightening all the students who are here uh, so so we have one question in the uh, uh, chat box but that should be the last one i understand you have to go so but uh, okay. yeah that's the last so one. it's another yes so yes yeah. it's good to hear from you see the oh, you, your question is very nice i answered actually this question it is the microbiota is one of the important factor in ibd that microbiota is decided even by the modality of delivery if someone is delivered cesarean or someone is delivered by normal vaginal delivery it is said that the one with the normal vaginal delivery take take a good a good bacteria or a good microbiota than the one who delivered by cesarean because the one delivered by cesarean will not acquire the bacteria normal bacteria which the baby was supposed to acquire uh, during the birth so whether that is predisposed to ibd that may be we have to do a population survey how many of our ibd patient has undergone cesarean section or normal delivery maybe it's a just a demographic data if we have a database again the database forms which we lack in india is the database we don't have one database where we can just uh, take everything and compare if we have some idea just put it in the database take idea and make it as a paper which uk people and us people have we don't have it so uh, so i think uh, i am very glad uh, to take part and uh, i think i was fortunate because i i am i always want to bring some uh, do some uh, research and i always want to do some papers so i all always into that field i in fact i told you i, I was very interested to join mmst course in iit karakpur uh, but then unfortunately i could not but i think it's my uh, luck so that i got to present with this uh, bunch of uh, good youngsters maybe i'll be able to help them if they need anything in the future i think i am the youngest of all those who had interacted with you kindly apologize if something is wrong in my talk but uh, whatever i felt which i was in your position as youngsters what i wanted guidance i thought maybe because i was busy till last night i made a brief heading and i told you so what i anticipated in if i was in your position what i anticipated i told you and just to inspire few things i told you anything else if i can help you 
you can mail me i'll be able to help you out thank you thank you dr ishwan so uh, with this i invite uh, uh, to close the session uh, with these remarks and then yeah so i'll like sujitesh i think you can close the session i think we started off yeah, yeah. No, and it was it was just uh, you know mesmerizing listening to Dr. Uh, Yashwant and you know I, I felt there's so many uh, basic things right as he started his first few slides you know, I think uh, the, the basic things that we all uh, you know forget in our day-to-day -day life as you know being different practitioners in different fields I think that was uh, you know brilliantly done and I think then going from those simple to complex uh, stuff. Uh, and I think the humility and I, I think I take back that uh, framework, right? The pipe in, you know, uh, I think that was also a, a kind of a final, you know, icing on the cake. And I think a few things that you, uh, you know, kind of hit upon. And uh, I think there were also the quite a number of interesting questions. And you know, we can almost see that there were like a half a dozen of ideas uh, which you said that, okay, we, we got to figure out, right? And I think uh, I, I think the new India, the new uh, talent is all about figuring it out. So I think uh, people are no longer afraid of, uh, you know, taking the startup entrepreneurship route. And I, do, I think uh, the best of it was like, we were all uh, wondering, you know, how we could, I think the last seven days we started last Tuesday and with just a break of the Sunday, I think it has been a, uh, I think this 5.30 to 7.30 uh, time if, uh, you know, I, I think this whole cohort meeting up and having this perspectives, we just think that, you know, it is like we don't need just integration, but super integration. Right? And, uh, you know, and I, I think the, the beauty of many of these conversations, including yours was, you know, you, you spoke a little bit about metaverse and artificial intelligence, uh, you know, digital analytics, telemedicine, right? I mean, I, I don't know whether it's the last two years, uh, you know, this one uh, one pandemic, which has kind of brought that the way we are interacting today. And I, I'm personally in Bangalore and I'll be keen to come over to Baptist, I think, during this week or coming next week. But the, the fortunate part is that, you know, some things have happened that made us all connect. And, and the reality of, you know, this conversation between an IIT uh, you know, a, a practitioner at a Baptist hospital plus a foundation. I mean, we, we all started this with a social motive, but now I think we, we kind of uh, thinking about, uh, you know, infinite possibilities out of this. I mean, everybody who's in this forum is going to be a good ambassador. And I, I think this is just the first week of sessions and there's a lot of doing things, right? So when they say, Adu thon, it is not just aid and thon, it's also doing. So I think the key word, the two key letters in this Adu thon is doing. So I think that phase we are just starting. And, uh, you know, thanks to you for setting this context. And I think from here on, next eight weeks or two months, um, you know, I think all the students, and we'll need your, you will need your guidance. So I think uh, there will be some of the other team, I'm sure, who's going to reach out and get some clarifications. Uh, so you know, you're going to be a useful resource for us. And I think some of your, you know, basic stuff, I, I, I think can create a lot of awareness in, in patients, right? A lot of times uh, the patients uh, just lose out because they, they're fighting a disease, but if there's a lot of you know, awareness created in advance. So, so we'll look forward to, you know, your engagement and, you know, thanks. Thank you so much for, you know, sparing this valuable time uh, with us today. Yeah. And I know it's a work day, so doing that on a work day is like uh, even thank tougher. You. Thank you so much. Fine. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Yeshwan. So, I, I also look forward to meet you if I'm in Bangalore sometime. Yeah, so sure, sure, sure. Okay.